I'd like to say a few things real quick. Before we get started Friday, we're going to do a trivia game. We're going to talk about the seasons and do trivia game. We're going to do them on live. You know, we're going to give you guys a chance to win money and prizes, you know, and that's money out my pocket. I haven't made one red cent off this channel as it stands now. You know, I just want to give back. And the only, you don't have to uh, put in money to get money back to participate. I'm only give. I'm only opening this up to the ones that subscribe to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, you're not eligible to play the game, you know. So we're going to be doing uh, Marathon Friday, and we're going to be doing um, trivia, you know. I'll be saying different things about, asking questions about the episodes, and whoever get it right, you comment in the comment section the fastest time, post it. You know, that's who win that prize, and you will instantly get money, you know, and prizes, you know, that's just my way of saying thank you guys for helping me with my mis mission to reach, reach the youth, you know. So that there's two things Friday. We will be having uh, Friday Marathon and Friday Trivia, only for subscribers. Okay, so we're going to pick up from a non-work day. Sleep late, lose weight. Okay, we go to child and we come back to the tier. Okay, so we got a transport coming in, and we got a particular group of guys. We got Lunchy, we got Selvage, we got Dino, and we got Chris. And these guys, you could tell, the way they move, the way they act, the way they looking, they not timid at all. So you know they veterans, they convicts for sure. So as these guys come in, they get their placement or whatever, and the whole tier is just kind of looking at these guys like they just trying to figure these guys out. But these guys guys ain't wavering at all these guys making direct eye contact with everybody in there now normally when i'm out of my cell i'm normally on the middle uh metal table in the middle of the tier you know what i'm saying and lake on them normally sit down on the actual bench chair but i be on the table part so it's another guy named megan that's sitting there too now, I noticed Megan put his Walkman down right there. You know, I look at it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't too much paying no attention to it. So this particular day, all my boys had to dab me down and head it back to their sales and shit. You know, they had other things to go do, you know, to get their day started or whatever. So I'm just sitting there, you know, doing my thing, minding my business. And it's just me and Megan left on this bench. So Megan gets up. And leave and go somewhere. I don't know where the hell he go. And he leave his Walkman there. And now I'm the only one sitting here with his Walkman. So, you know, after a couple minutes of him not coming back, you know, I'm already about to leave. So I get up and leave. Now, I head back to my cell, you know, to go get myself together so I can get my day started. So now, while I'm in my cell, I hear a whole lot of loud noise. So I peeks out the cell. And as I peek out the cell, Megan's looks at me and say, uh-uh, man, uh-uh, man, come here, man, come here. Man, uh uh, I need to find this walk man. So I'm kind of walking towards Megan, and he like, We need to put this shit in park and throw it in reverse. That walk man need to reappear on this motherfucking table, man. Hey, bro, it wasn't nobody but me and you here, bro. And I'm like, Hey, man, I ain't touch your walk man. I ain't touch no fucking walk man. Matter of fact, I don't even own a walk man. You know, and me and Megan going back and forward at this time. Now, while he carrying on with all this loud talking and all that, you know, my boys, they all come around. His boys, they all come around. And now he talking. Man, hey, bro, if this walk man don't reappear, man, you going to have to bump. Man, you going to have to bump. Now, I ain't taking no whole route or nothing like that, but I'm steady telling him, to make a situation that's nothing never arise. You know, I'm trying to tell him, look, bro, I ain't got nothing to do with your walk, man. Man, when I got up, that walk, man was still right here on this bench. Nah, nigga. Nah, nigga. Now he getting hostile, you know, and walking up on me at the time. So now he got a homeboy named Quack. So Quack's there. Let him bump. Let him bump. And Laco look at me and Doc. Both of them tell me, hey, man, G, you want to bump with this nigga? And I'm like, man, if he insists on uh, accusing me of taking this walk, man, and I Take his walk, man. We're gonna have to bump. 
You know what I'm saying? So now, they just threw him to the curve already. He all the way gone. Now, shit, what you mean we gonna have to bump? Let's bump then. So as this shit persists to about 15 to 20 minutes, you know, Pop Pop, Laco tell Pop Pop, go get him some shoes. Go get him some shoes. And his boy say, go get him some shoes. And they both going to get us some shoes now. You know, and we get the shoes and we headed to the shower. Now, my whole way back to the shower, I'm thinking, now nah, I'm about to one-on-one -on -one fight in this prison over some shit that I ain't even do. You know what I'm saying? So all the way back there, I guess he thinking I'm scared. So I'm like, hey, bro, check this out, man. I ain't got your walk, man, bro. I'm trying to uh, fix this situation, bro. I ain't take nothing from you, man. You can go check my cell. So by me saying all that, I guess he took that as a sign of weakness. Now, as we walking, he get to going on a whole rant. Bitch-ass nigga won't steal. Bitch-ass nigga won't take some shit. And bitch ass nigga won't throw them things. Bitch-ass nigga scared. Listen there. Bitch-ass nigga explain everything. And they good for calling nigga bitch-ass nigga this, bitch-ass nigga that. So I'm just eating this shit up. I ain't saying nothing as I'm walking. But I'm thinking, I'm trying to get my mind in mold. Megan ain't no small-ass little dude. You know what I'm saying? Megan is a nice-sized dude. You know, me and Megan, nice-sized dude, but he's a little bit bigger than me. Now, anytime I get ready to fight, I'm always nervous. I ain't scared, but I'm nervous. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know what's going to happen in a fight. So as we get back there, he get to putting on his shoes. I get to putting on my shoes. I'm sure, hurry up, bitch, nigga. He ain't even got his shoes on good. And he telling me to hurry up like I'm scared trying to take my time and get out to fight or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't knowing. I'm focusing in on him. I'm fully invested in this shit now. Now me and Megan swearing up. You know what I'm saying? And we just going around in a circle. Then finally, Megan swings the overhand ass fucking lick. And misses me. And I stick him. Bow, bow. Now we get in the blend. We mixing. And this big motherfucker puts his head down and starts trying to fight me. When he did that, oh, all the confidence in the world hit me. Now I'm showing out for the team. I'm moving. Bow, bow. I'm sticking his ass. I'm punishing his ass. I'm busting Megan. Every time I hit Megan, seem like blood fly, fly from Megan. I'm showing out for my team. I'm telling Doc, I'm about to put him down. He done built my confidence up. You big motherfucker. You can't even fight. He's fighting with his head down. Now, I'm getting the best of this motherfucker. I'm working him. So, this big motherfucker rushes me, grab me, put his leg behind my leg, and clips me onto the floor. Now, I'm on the floor, and I'm swarming, trying to get up, and he's trying to hit me, and I'm blocking but he's hitting me. He Now I'm bleeding at this point. So he grabs my head and try to hit my head against the flow. But I'm holding my head. I'm trying to brace myself and end up grabbing his hand. So as I got his hand, I'm holding his hand to try to keep him from either banging my head against the flow or, you know, punching me. This big motherfucker bites me. Ah, ah, let me go, bitch. This bitch bite me. This bitch bite me. So this bitch got a fucking pit bull lock on my hand, and he won't let go. So I'm hitting him. I'm doing everything. Ah, this bitch bite me, trying to get him to let me go. So I can't get him to let me go. So I grabs this bitch, and I bite this bitch. Now nah, we biting each other, but I'm biting him harder. I'm trying to rip this bitch skin off. So finally, he starts hollering, and I gets my fucking hand back. So once I had them bit him, he had them went to half position. Now he kind of standing up over me, crouched over me, punching me. But I hear him up and scoot back. I'm scooting back, and I get to my feet, and I rush him again. Pow, 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 and then we fall back out the mix. You can see it in his eyes. He don't want to even fight no more, and his boys see it. So they come try to break it up, but ain't nobody holding me. So I goes on, I creeps around the side and bow, bitch, and you better not play with me. Now I know I hit that boy hard because this bitch stumbles backwards and ain't attempt to come back at me. I felt that lick vibrate through my body. I hit him so hard. You can see that bitch eyes is fire red. He don't want no more. So once the fight over, I don't even go to my cell. I go sit on the metal table in the center and just look at him. He outside of his cell. He ain't even trying to look at me. I'm looking at him. Yeah, bitch, you better not play with me no more. I ain't still a motherfucking thing. And I'm still letting him know. 
Boy, you just got your ass whooped for nothing because I ain't take nothing from this man. So while all this go on, we hear this dude Lunchy that came in on the transport. He telling this other little dude that came in with him on the transport, yeah, tomorrow I want your morning child. I want your... He telling this dude he want his morning child, his afternoon child, his evening child. Pretty much, the dude ain't gonna eat nothing because he won't... That's why we called him, nicknamed him Lunchy because he started telling different people in the prison... He want they child. So we gonna fast forward to that next work day. Sleep late, lose weight. Now we go to child, and all you see is the little dude scoot lunchy his tray. Slides him his tray. And lunchy imps the little dude tray onto his. And, the little, and get a little dude back an empty tray, and the little dude sitting there like this. So he end up keep doing this to the little dude every single day. But I'm going to get back to uh, when we get back from child, we go to workforce. Okay, now we in workforce. Everybody do their job. Everybody moving about, grabbing different tools, doing different jobs. Everything going good. I leave out to go take a smoke about an hour in to the work day. Put your motherfucking hands down. Put them by your side. When I open up the shop, though, this is what I'm seeing. You got all uh, CO buddies and Captain Barry beating the fuck out of inmate. I mean, they in there beating his ass. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Don't you ever spit on a motherfucking concrete again. They beating this inmate ass because he hawked on the concrete. That's how senseless this is what they doing. Get the fuck out of here. Get your ass out of here. That's what they tell me when they see me because I came straight in the room because I didn't hear him as I walked up. So I hurry up and made the fucking U-turn and got the fuck out of there, went back to carpool in detail and told everybody, man, the CO's in that bitch beating this little dude as raw. So as I'm telling everybody what's going on, you see CO buddy and Captain Barrett come walk up in uh, carpool. They point at Laco and tell Laco to come here. Now I'm thinking they about to beat my dog ass. I'm like, oh shit, the day is the day. Because I already said, the day that Sergeant Larry, Buddy, or Barry call one of my dogs, it's on. We all about to go down for life. Because they got my back and I got they back. It ain't no leader. We all equal. Now, I'm still knowing that since all this been going on, Laco been packing his blade every time we come to work for us. He been having that blade on him. So Laco gets up to Sergeant Barry and they give him the deposition box off the hallway. They hand him the deposition box and they tells him to go hang the deposition box on the west wing of the prison. Now that's a good little distance for Laco to be walking by itself. He already know, you know, we coming. Once you get out there, once they get out of sight, we coming to where you at. So Lakos leaves out and the guards head out where they going. So by the time we get on the west wing of the prison by the annex, we see Laco got me head against the wall, cut me head the fuck up, slicing me head the fuck up relentlessly. We calls him first because we ain't running up on no blade. But he too far by the assistant warden's office. He's too close. And just so happens, you see three COs just happen to walk out the warden's office at this time. And they see Laco stabbing and jugging and cutting me head the fuck up. They stumbled and startled by this. So they pulls out mace. They sprays Laco first. Now we watching all this and they begins to beat my dog and beating him and beating him and beating him. And at this time, we ain't got no choice but to get the fuck out of sight. So we head back to carpool, and once we get there, we talking like, man, what the fuck? Why Lego did this shit, man? It was just him and me head. And over there... Even if he would have got away on that side close by the war the assistant warden and the warden's office, they got cameras. They got surveillance to protect the warden. They make sure they protect the warden, though. 
They got cameras. My dog gone. When I tell you our mood was so bad, this little dude Kenny was in our carpool. He was like, man, that boy gone. And Noah stuck his ass. Shut the fuck up. And Lil One tried to stand up with Noah, but Noah beat the shit out of Lil One. And I can remember me at this time, all I kept saying, my dog, my dog. Wrap it up. And I can remember us getting back to the tier. When we got back in the tier, we immediately find Pedro. And we tell him what happened to Laco. And he like, man, not my dog, man. He saying the same shit. We stick with the plan. We all gather our shit up. And we go take a shower. When we're in the shower, immediately we hear the bullshit. All we hear is rumbling, falling all over shit. Motherfuckers bouncing out shit. And we runs out the shower, ass booty, buck naked again. And we see Baby Charles and Cinnamon. Queen Sugar, homeboy, Cinnamon, and Baby Charles rumbling. Baby Charles getting with that bitch. But Cin Cinnamon got them hands too. And plus he bigger than Baby Charles. So they going at it. Baby Charles holding his own. It's about a what and what fight. So I'm going, get that bitch Charles. Charles rolling that bitch over. They wrestling, fighting. They kicking. Baby Charles will kick his feet out to try to distract him. And then punch at that bitch. Baby Charles is putting in work. So all of a sudden, I just turn around. And as I turn around, I see that bitch Megan trying to hit me. That bitch hit me. I'm seeing stars. That bitch didn't hit me with the battery sock. That bitch hit me again. So I'm trying to get my motherfucking composure back. I can't see nothing at the time. I'm seeing stars and specks. All I could do at this time is kind of bag up enough space to kind of try to give me a little time to get my equilibrium back. But I'm talking about it ain't working. And I just see my dog hit him. Bow! Now my dog can hit him. I'm kind of getting my focus back. So I charge that bitch and start hitting that bitch. But I'm fucked up. And my dogs know it. So they start stomping me and ass out. Then they boys run over here. Now I'm still kind of out of it at the time. So I ain't much juice to him. But I start going at one of his boys. And as I'm going at his boys, his other boy, Coon, Bow! Stuck me from the back. Now I goes into the dude that I'm going at and holds him and grab him as I fall all the way to the ground. I ain't knocked out. I'm up. But I can't, I can't get my legs back. I'm falling all over the place trying to get up. And they kicking me and shit. So everything end up coming down. And I can just remember me laying on the floor holding my fucking ribs. Now at this time, I didn't know I had broken ribs. I had three broken ribs and I end up staying in the dorm for two days before I realized that my ribs was broke. So my dogs held me up off the floor and take me back to my cell. Now I remember when they laid me on that bed, felt like electricity went through my body. I knew something was wrong, but I thought I was real, real sore. I had never felt what that felt like before. And laying in that bed that whole night, I was so uncomfortable. I couldn't lay this way. I couldn't lay this way. I lay on my back and feel like I'm putting too much pressure on them that way. But I end up doing this for two days. I end up going to work with broken ribs. Lockdown! Now, I remember this night specifically because we all in our cell on lockdown and the alarms in the entire prison, all over the prison, starts going off. And you see the COs that's in our tier, that's behind that door, come rushing out of there, running from to an adjacent dorm, just running backwards and forwards. And you see all kind of chaos going on. We all wondering what the fuck going on. What the fuck going on. So that next day, we find out a trustee. And you know the trustees normally clean up after everybody on lockdown in their cells. A trustee sprays something on an inmate, something flammable. And burnt up four inmates locked inside their cells. Burnt them up. He waited good to lock down. And sprayed something on them and burnt them up. Now, I don't know the condition he left them in. But the way they was talking in the prison. 
like those boys was bacon burnt. Now, the way I heard it, somebody paid that trustee to do that. He didn't even have beef with those people. Somebody pay him to do that to those people. So that means you ain't even safe when you sleep inside your cell from the people that's outside your cell. You can get violated, stabbed by your cellmates, or you can get harmed by the inmates that's outside of your cell that's permitted to roam about. After everybody locked down. All right. I want to do another quick reminder to all the channel subscribers. We going to do trivia for cash and prizes. We going to have some fun with this thing to see how much y'all remember. And we going to do it on the live. And all y'all have to do is have the comment section ready. And the time that comes in first. Who get the answer correctly. Will immediately gets cash and prizes. That's just my way of thanking you guys, you know, for helping me reach these younger guys out here. Because we got to change some of these things. You know, a bunch of guys in our area just got killed the night before last. You know, it's crazy. And one guy's fighting for his life right now. We have to make this shit stop. All right, so Friday, the marathon pops off and trivia for cash and prizes. Let's go.